Hello. You are most welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, to real impartation moment on Tuesday night anatomy with Daniel Alpan. Today's section, I run with you the trochlear nerve. And we all know that this trochlear nerve is the fourth cranial nerve. And one unique thing about it is that it is the only cranial nerve which emerges from the dorsal aspect of the brainstem. Okay, precisely from the midbrain. You know that in the midbrain, two nerves are emerging there. Okay, one of them is the third nerve which we've looked at. Okay, but the other nerve is what we call a trochlear nerve. But this time around, right, it doesn't emerge from the ventral aspect of the brainstem. It emerges from the dorsal aspects of the brainstem. Okay, and so without much ado, let's set the ball rolling looking at this cranial nerve. And one thing we know about is that it is the only nerve which gives that motor supply to only one muscle, okay? One extramuscular muscle being, of course, superior oblique muscle. Yeah, that's why we say SO4, yes, superior oblique supply, but of course, the fourth, you know, cranial nerve. And so, without much ado, yes, let's see what I have for you today. So, there we are. Yes, this is the, I mean, the midbrain, okay, of the brainstem, okay? That's what we have. And one thing is that just like, I mean, the third nerve, it will also have its nucleus. Okay, so the trochlear nucleus, this time around, just like the third nerve, it will also be emerging deep in what we call the periaqueductal gray matter. Deep in the periaqueductal gray matter. Okay, so that is what we have. And unlike that of the third nucleus, where of course we found out that the oculomotor nucleus, there was that kind of fusion of the two nuclei in the midline of the brainstem. For, I mean, the trochlear nucleus, there's nothing like, there's no fusion of the two nuclei. As you can see over here, they are separate. Okay, so what is happening is that, okay, if this is the right side, okay, the right, from the right nucleus, okay, then the nerve, where the trochlear will be imagined towards the opposite side. Okay, and then coming from the, I mean, the left one, the left nucleus, the nerve, okay, will be imagined towards that of the right side. So it tells you that eventually the nerve, which is the superior oblique, which will be supplied by the trochlear nerve, okay, will be supplied by, of course, the contralateral, yes, I mean, nucleus, okay? So the nerve of the contralateral aspect will be supplying. So, for instance, if it's coming from the left side, okay, the nucleus from the left side, the fibers coming from the left side will get eventually go to the right. And that coming from the right, okay, okay the nucleus give off the fibers, the nerve will be coming all the way toward the left side. Okay, so just get to know that, yes, although the nucleus, okay, the fibers, okay, the muscle which is supplied, which is, of course, the superior oblique, will be supplied by, of course, the contralateral, you know, fibers, okay? So that's one important thing I want you to know. And because it has to wind, now look at that, the third nerve, it's actually imagined, imaged through the interpretable force, it came, you know, ventrally. But this nerve will be coming dorsally, okay, from the posterior aspect, dorsally of the brainstem. Okay, so that is, I mean, that nerve which, I mean, you have to know. So that's one unique thing. It is the only cranial nerve which emerges from the dorsal aspect of the brainstem. Okay, that's one number one. And because it emerges from the dorsal aspect of the brainstem, it has to wind all the way, okay, to eventually even come ventrally, go into the, I mean, middle cranial fossa, eventually get to the orbit, okay, to supply the eye. And that is why we say that this is the nerve with the longest intracranial course. Okay, so the nerve with the longest intracranial course is nothing but, of course, the trochlear nerve. Okay, that's also one unique thing that you should know about it because it has to wind all the way from here, all the way here, okay, to eventually come here. But for, I mean, oculomotor nerve just run all the way here, then it came. And one thing that you should also know is that once it comes out of the brain, I mean, the brain stem, okay, sorry, once it comes out of the midbrain, okay, it also sees the two arteries you mentioned. So just like this, it has the same relations, just like the oculomotor nerve, which run through the two arteries, okay? Above, we have the posterior cerebral artery, and below, we have what we call superior cerebellar artery. So the same relation, okay? And then from there, yes, there's the posterior clinal process. Yes, it's made from lateral aspect of the posterior clinal process. And then from there, we have what we call the cavernous sinus. And this time around, just like the oculomotor nerve, it also run on the lateral wall, of what we call the cavernous, you know, sinus, okay, lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, 
Okay, so that is, I mean, what we find over here. And then this time right, it's not going to divide into anterior and posterior DV because eventually it's going to, I mean, innervate only a single muscle. Okay, so from the lateral wall of the cardinal sinus, it runs through what we call the superior orbital fascia, superior orbital fascia. Okay, so that is, I mean, what we find. Okay, and then from there, we see that there's this muscle over here, which is the levator papillary superioris, which was supplied actually by, you know, some of the fibers coming from the superior division of the oculomotor nerve. Okay, so it runs on top of it. Okay, it runs superficial on top of the, I mean, levator, you know, papillary superioris. Okay, and then from there, it goes and then supplies what you call the superior oblique muscle superior oblique muscle okay so that is i mean one thing that i want you to know generally regarding you know this i mean course okay so i mean just by you know telling you some other things one thing that you should know is that yes you've seen that because it's winding around the midbrain okay this way dorsally it is the i mean the nerve with the longest you know intracranial course that's number one we've said that there's going to be complete decreasation okay at the level over here okay before it it will emerge out before it will come out of the midbrain there will be that kind of complete decreasation that's another point that you have to know and then one other thing too is that yes it is actually the thinnest cranial nerve okay the slender most cranial nerve that we have over there in the human body is the trochlear nerve the thinnest cranial nerve okay so that's also an important thing that i want you to actually know okay so that is i mean that one for you and then by way of the relations yeah just like the oculomotor nerve it will be run between the posterior cerebral artery above and of course superior cerebral artery below it also run along the lateral wall please get to know the lateral wall of what you call the i mean the cardinal sinus and then from there yes it will go through what you call the superior orbital fascia to gain access into the i mean orbit and when it gets access into the orbit, the nerve which it will run superficial to it is the levator papillary superioris. And then from there, it goes on to supply what we call the, I mean, the superior oblique muscle. Okay, so that is, I mean, that one that I want you to know. I hope you find this helpful. I'm very grateful for your time this evening. Have a good night, all of you. And may the good Lord richly bless you. Amen.